So, uh, in earlier videos, I introduced the concepts of correlation and R-square in the context of um, univariate linear regression. Here I'm going to talk about um, part, or sometimes called semi-partial, uh, R-squared and correlations. So, the setup for uh, this video is that I have three variables, and this time I'm going to call them x3, x2, and x1. Uh, relevant background. Uh, would be uh, sums of squares for a variable is equal to, well, in this case, oops, sums of squares for, uh, for example, x1 would be the sum of each, uh, each value of x1, uh, get its distance away from its mean, square those, and sum them up. So, as usual, this is a measure of the variation in x1. Uh, covari covariance between, for example, x1 and x2 would be defined um, as usual as the sum as the sum of the distances of each of the two variables from the mean for that respective variable. Um, take the product of those and add those up, and that's the covariance. Uh, correlations. The correlation between two variables, for example, x1 and x2, would be the ratio between the covariance between those two variables and the sums of squares uh, for each of those variables individually. And then the square root of that to keep everything on the same scale. Whoa. And um, to keep the notation brief uh, in this video, we're going to use R12 to denote the correlation between x1 and x2. Correlations are... Uh, oftentimes correlations are kind of compactly displayed in a correlation matrix. So, I'll give an example of that here. Correlation. So, for example, if we have oops, our three x's, In the correlation matrix, the diagonal elements would represent the correlation between um, a variable and itself, which a variable is perfectly linearly related to itself. So along those diagonal elements are always going to be a positive one. Uh, the off-diagonal elements will be the correlation between the row variable and the column variable. So in that case, it's the correlation between x2 and x1. Here it will be the correlation between x3 and x1. Here between x3 uh, and x2, here between x1 and x2, here between x1 and x3, and here between x2 and x3. And then if you take all of the elements here and square them, then you end up with a similar matrix, and this one I'll call the um, R square matrix. And you still have one along the diagonals, but now the values represent the proportion of variation explained. So this would be r square 2, 1, r square 3, 1, r square 3, 2, r square 1, 2, r square 1, 3, and r square 2, 3. Oops. Over here it should be a 2, 3. So yeah, so these represent, um, for a univariate model, say x hat i equals beta 0 plus beta 1 xj. So here I'm saying uh, i and j could be any numbers between 
1 and 3. Uh, and a model like this will get you a correlation between i and j. So if i is 1 and j is 2, then it would be the correlation between uh, variables x1 and x2. And these, the correlation matrix kind of neatly summarizes the correlations or the, the strength and magnitude of the linear relationships between each pair of the variables that we're interested in. Similarly, the R-square matrix neatly summarizes the variation, uh, the proportion of variation in one of these variables explained by um, either of the others that we're interested in here. So for example, um, this value would represent the proportion of variation in x3 that's explained by x1. Uh, and this value over here would represent the strength and direction of the linear relationship between x3 and x1. So, uh, these matrices are really nice for summarizing all the pairwise relationships between variables that we're interested in. But when we start thinking about multiple regression, multiple regression, so we might have a model like uh, x hat i is equal to x hat i is equal to uh, an estimated inter intercept plus an estimated slope uh, on one of the variables plus an estimated slope on the other variable. When we have a model like this, um, one question that we're interested in might be something like, uh, how much additional variation Uh, can be accounted for by adding uh, xk to a model that estimates or that uses xj to estimate xi. <clears throat> and this is the kind of question that would be answered by um, a part correlation. So this is sometimes expressed with Venn diagrams. So here, if the circle represents um, xi, and all of the area in it would be the sums of squares for xi, We can imagine another circle representing xj. And this overlap between the two uh, would represent the proportion of variation in i that's explained by j. And then we can imagine a third, which is xk. And so now what we have is all of this area would be the portion of variation in xi uh, that's explained by a model that has both xj and xk. And what we're interested in uh, is this area here, which I'll express as a part correlation. So this would be uh, uh, general notation might be r square for i. So it's the proportion of variation in i that's explained by k uh, uniquely. And so to find it, we can figure out what this whole area is. Again, that would be that would be the proportion of variation in i that's explained by j and k together, and then we can remove uh, this area, which would represent 
the correlation between i and k. So what we did is we uh, take this entire area to be the sum of the squared total in xi that we're trying to explain. We note that all of this area is the overlap between the three. Um, so then to get kind of the uh, additional variation that's explained by xk, we take the variation that's explained when we use all three variables and we remove the variation that can be explained by just xj. Um, this can also be computed in terms of correlation as take the correlation between variables i and k and subtract off uh, the product of the correlations between i and j and k and j divide by the square root of uh, 1 minus the proportion of variation um, in k explained by j and since we want this in terms of proportion of variation explained we would square uh, this whole term. Similarly, we can get part correlations, which are have a similar notation. Uh, the correlation between i and k, um, kind of uniquely or after controlling for j, is the square root of the proportion of variation explained in i by both j and k uh, together and you take out the proportion of variation explained in i by k alone and in terms of correlations this would be the correlation between i and k minus the product of the correlations between i and j and between k and j over uh, 1 minus the proportion of variation explained in k by j square rooted. So uh, keep in mind that i, j, and k are uh, very general. So you can plug in any variables for these three or you know any numbers or adapt this to whatever the specific problem is that you're um, working on. Uh, so for example, if i was 3 and j was 2, then um, we could look back at these correlation matrices to figure out which values to plug into uh, these formulas to get the part and partial, or to get the part correlation. In another video, I talk about partial correlations and kind of compare them to part correlations.